I'm going to show you how to do the A-level physics required practical verification of Boyle's law. That is, for a constant temperature, the volume of a gas is inversely proportional to the pressure. Now, it's a fairly simple one, but you've got to think carefully if you want to get some accurate results. Choose your equipment carefully. Now, I have a syringe here, and I've put some air in it already, and I've got 2.0 millilitres or centimetres cubed of air in there. That's my volume. What I've then done is put some tubing on the top on the end and I've put a clamp on there so no air can get in or out. I've also tied some string to the bottom so that allows me to hang some masses on there and increase the force acting on the gas which actually decreases the pressure inside the gas. Now choose your syringe carefully. Ideally, it would have been great to have used one of these, a gas syringe, because they have very little friction between the plunger and the actual tube. But the issue with this is that it's very wide, and so that means that the volume of the gas isn't going to change much with the masses that we hang on the end. This syringe here has a resolution of zero, 0.2 centimeters cubed and so that should be okay for us So let's just hang some masses on the end and see how that changes the volume to begin with Now that I've hung 100 grams on the bottom of the plunger I'm going to wait a few seconds before reading what the volume is because like we said we need the temperature to be constant because we're doing work its temperature is going to change when we increase the force. So we need to wait a few seconds just to make sure that it reaches thermal equilibrium first. In other words, the temperature of the gas goes back to room temperature. I see that we have a volume of 2.2 centimeters cubed. Let's add another 100, so we have 200 grams. Not really enough change to observe. Let's have 300. I can see that's 2.4 centimeters cubed. I'm just gonna keep adding masses until I get to basically the bottom of my markings on the syringe. Now this is one of those experiments that you might wanna think about doing repeats for because there is a fair amount of random error in this, but I'm just gonna go with my one set of results for now. Now that I have my masses, I need to turn that into pressure. How much pressure were we putting on the gas, or rather how much pressure were we pulling the gas with? In order to do that, we need to calculate force divided by area. Our force is from our weight, so we can say that's mg. So we need to measure the diameter of the plunger in order to calculate the area. Let's do that first. Using a vernier caliper, the diameter of my plunger is 11.8 millimeters. So turning that into a cross-sectional area. Putting in some calculator pi d squared divided by four, pi times diameter squared divided by four, that gives us a cross-sectional area of 1.09 times 10 to the minus four meters squared. Now, in order to calculate the actual pressure in the gas, we need to take our atmospheric pressure, 101 kilopascals, that's what the gas was initially, and subtract the pressure that we were pulling on it with due to the force from the mass, the weight. So, say for our first result, we take 101 kilopascals and take away 9 kilopascals, and that leaves us with the actual pressure in the gas. Now we want to draw a graph to see if our relationship is correct, that pressure is inversely proportional to volume. So we're not going to plot P against V because they aren't proportional, we're going to plot P against 1 over V, the reciprocal of the volume, or vice versa, it doesn't really matter. As you can see, I have a fairly straight line, but it's been shifted upwards, so that means that I have a systematic error here somewhere. I'm going to guess that that is due to the friction of the plunger. So if I was to do this experiment again, I'd try and find a syringe that has very little friction to make sure that the only force involved is from the weight pulling downwards.